few moments, and our big band bringing out the old yard and bringing in the new. With me today is uh, Mr. John Fideli. Hey, how you doing, baby? And super special guest and star, Mr. Mark Dalzell. <laughs> Sorry, John. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> very good, very so, good. It's, I mean, we didn't make many promises in 2021. The almost the only thing we said we were going to do was, hey, why don't we do a special New Year show? Yes. And here we are. So, sorry to disappoint everyone. This is yeah. a- <laughs> well, special. We got a special guest star, at least. We do. Just you and me bantering off On about records. On today's show, I have a few letters. We have a few uh, thank you letters from folks who donated to our school camera donation program. Mm-hmm. We have a, a roll in talking about uh, Bodicu Films. Bodicu Films by Mr. Bar- Mark O'Brien. Bark O'Brien. <laughs> Bark O'Brien. <laughs> On the 1st of January. Huh? In 2022, everyone's name, we take we switch the letters. Okay. okay. Well, uh, you already did that for yeah, my IMDb got, credit. So you got the best I'm already one. Dark Malzell. That's right. Great. It sounds uh, like, it's, you sound like uh, Darth Vader's cousin or something. And we're doing a review. Uh, Mark, Mark Dalzell is reviewing the Super Fujika 6. Super? Number... Five, six, it's on the top of the number camera. One, number one! Number one! Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm reviewing specifically this exact zero number of camera. Yes. Cut. Reload. That's a complicated looking machine, isn't it? Funny thing is, a lot of people still think that taking home movies is that complicated, too. If that were true, believe me, I wouldn't take them. For instance, he's reloading the film. Let me show you how easy Kodak has made it for you and me with a Kodak Instamatic movie camera. You finish one roll of film, drop another one in. You're all set. You know, now is the time to start, too. When the kids are growing up, you're on your vacation. Save the action and the color in movies. With Kodak projectors, movies are easy to show, too. And cameras start at less than $35. Actually, you know what Kodak does for you? Right. Hey, we're back. You know the track man? You met him, right? Hey. I think I've never met him. I've spoken to him. I put that. I had those pictures of his parents. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. You found the roll of film. I have his uncle's camera. <laughs> uh, so uh, we've told a story before, very briefly. So Mark thrifted a camera. A, very, a state sale. At a state sale. Yeah. Large format negatives. And he developed them and <laughs> just went over to uh, his studio and looked at them like, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Those are track man's parents. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> That was a, and there were good pictures. They were beautiful pictures. They came out great, considering it was undeveloped film that had been sitting in the camera since the late sixties. Yeah. Holy crap! Because one of the one of the pictures in there was a was of a brand new nineteen sixty nine Cadillac. So that's how oh, I kind of dated it. Ah, nice. So two door, four door, four door. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, it had to we'll, be. We'll a have four to get door. on the Flickr and look at the. If eggs. it was sixty nine, it's probably a four door. Trackman was commenting how the little clip of the little sound test we did on regular eight film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how that there were so many views on it. You know, one of these little cameras, mm. no, you know, they're just a wind-up camera. You can sync sound. The sardine can. Like, you have to, like, you can sync every few phrases yeah. and then take a break and then resync it again. Right, right. For people shooting movies on film, I'm going to encourage in this year for people to record wild sound. Like on their phone. Yeah. So if you're shooting, I don't know, family event, let's say at the table or whatever, just... Start recording sound, and you will be able to sync that. Oh, that's Get out your clapper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get Grandma to clap. Woo! 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 
So when we come back, we're going to do some letters and stuff, and Mark's going to do a segment. I promise Mark you're going to be able to do your segment. Yeah. Why, don't we come, why don't we come back with Mark's camera segment and get out of the way? <laughs> oh, so oh, get it out of the way. So he doesn't get F. Well, let's just what finish I mean. it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Put it out of its misery. That's not what I mean. All right. We'll be right, <laughs> right back. This is my dog. We lost best of show at a big dog show. That was a sad night. He was very upset. I took some pictures, remember? Huh? Well, now you don't think I'd take them just anywhere to be developed. Here, come on, look at them. Ask for the Kodak Color Watch system. This Color Watch seal says only Kodak products are used for great developing. He's still upset. I show him the pictures. He says, Arf, Color Watch, you're going to thank me for it. Hey, we're back. Oh, hey. Uh, I'm very intrigued by this camera. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I would guess by looking at this camera, that's really not that popular, but in fact should be, because I own a few similar to this, and they're great cameras. Well, yeah. This is, so what I've got is the, the Fujika. The, so, it says well, Super Fujika. Well, the, it's the, but the company that made it is the Fuji Photo Film Company. So this was, so fu, what we know as Fuji Film now. Oh, it's the FFF. <laughs> this was, this was the, uh, the first camera they made, which was this, the, um, the Fujika 6. So they had been a film company mm-hmm. back to World War One. Not the Fuji we know Yeah, today. same company. Oh. Yeah, same company. Okay. So starting, I think it was 1919, 1917, they were making film, 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 film. And then in 1948, they actually came out with a camera, which was basically this, the, um, the, the uh, Fujika 6. It's a 120, right? Yeah, it's a 120 6x6 six six folder, but like a feature-laden folder. The the regular Fujika 6 was made from 48 to 55, 56. There were a bunch of different variations of it. So there were at least, like the you know, like the Russian cameras where it's like, oh, it's the Fed B3 mm-hmm. version D right. where, you know, it's like, oh, it's a slightly different this, difference. slightly different that. You know, right. they changed it from this lens to that lens. So that's what they would did with this. So there's like seven, eight, nine different versions of this. So which where does this sit in the pantheon of... Cameras. Well, so in in, uh, in the last couple of years, in 55, it was, they came out with this, which is the Super Fujika 6. Super! So the previous Fujikas were not rangefinders. This is a coupled rangefinder. What does that mean, coupled? It means you, when you look through the thing, you know, like as you as you adjust the rangefinder, yeah. you'll see the two little images overlap with okay. each other. Right. And then when you get that distance, you don't have to then translate that onto the focusing of the lens itself. Oh really? Oh okay. So it's coupled. So when I when I move when you move that when I move this, it's it's changing the rangefinder and it. the lens at the same time. So older rangefinders, you'd have to focus in on the viewfinder and then change it on so, the lens. Not necessarily older. I mean, even like back like the Argus C three has like a coupled rangefinder, but a lot of the time uh-huh. on these one twenty folders, uh, they okay. weren't coupled. Oh, this one has got the uh, seventy five millimeter Fujinar lens. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, let me see. Did I look through seventy five? Awkward. Yeah, there were again even with the Super Fujika Six, there were a bunch of different versions of it. But this has the seventy-five millimeter Fujinar lens. It has a full range of shutter speeds from one second up to a five hundredth with bulb. Your f stops go from three point five down to twenty two. Some of the things that make this one fancy, besides having the coupled rangefinder, this has a, a PC port for a flash. It's got a cold shoe on top. Cold shoe. Then the fancy stuff. So when you're winding it, oh, and in, in, in my particular case, my wind knob is missing. Oh. It didn't come with the wine knob, so I made one out of an old amp knob, but I'm actually... <laughs> Coincidentally, today, I'm turning over a new chapter of my own life. My new 3D printer arrives today. <gasps> oh, So I'm going to get wow. in. So the first, one of the first things I'm going to do is make a wine knob for this camera. Cool. So this has uh, basically automatic loading. So you'll load in your roll of 120. You advance it to the arrows. Uh-huh. Like in a, the uh, Yashica mats and right, things like sure. that. Then you, once, you, once you line up your arrows, you close the back. And then just keep winding, winding, winding. It'll find the first frame. It'll stop. Get out of town. And then when you shoot it, you just wind it until it stops again. Oh, that's so it, pretty it awesome. finds the frames. It doesn't have the red window in the back. That's right. great. You don't have to like roll, roll, roll. Watch Very convenient. It. Roll, roll, roll your film. How does it know where the end is? Well, it, it counts. So sh- assuming you're shooting 6x6 six six on, on a roll of 120, it's been two years for me now. But as I recall, that's 12. 12, 12 yeah. <laughs> so when it gets to shot 12, it'll, it'll disengage the frame stop and just let you wind it right to the end. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It has a double exposure prevention. Okay. It has a wind indicator, so it's got a little red dot here. So when the camera is actually cocked oh. and, and wound, 
It's got a little film type reminder in there, which I don't even know what half of these are. Indicator to tell you what film yeah, you so have. Yeah, so I can remind myself. No, it doesn't tell me. I had to tell it, but okay. just as a reminder. <laughs> SS, that's the Super Sport, so that's got better suspension, bigger engine. Yeah. Do you ever put a piece of tape on the back, white tape, and just write what you have in the camera? Do you do that? That's what I always do. Yeah, okay. a piece of medical tape. Yeah. I keep in my camera bag, I keep a Sharpie with a, like a foot of medical tape wrapped around it, and I just peel off a piece and... Usually I stick it Does on it the bottom. Does it ever fall off and you forget what you got in there? No. The medical no. tape's good. Usually I'll stick it on the metal. What is medical tape? I always talk about paper artist tape. What's like, me- uh, like, you know, like the white tape you use to tape bandages on. Oh, okay. Comes on a little metal spool at the, at the pharmacy. Oh, uh, okay. right. It's, it's kind, of, it, kind of like stretchy. Uh, a little bit. It's, fat, yeah. it's, it's, cl- it's cloth-backed, so it's, it's pretty firm. Oh, okay. It rips yeah. really easily. Yep, yep, you yep. can write on it really easily. It doesn't stick too hard because yes. it's made to go on skin. So. The cloth is good for writing on. Yeah, it's easy to write on. It's not going to mess up your leatherette. If you stick it to the actual leatherette, it won't mess that up. But like I said, I usually stick it to the actual metal part of the mm-hmm, gear. Mm-hmm. Metal. This one, uh, it, you know, Cox fires pretty well to fold. You just push these little tabs and, it, and you, pinch your finger, you pinch your thumbs. Because of what we were just talking about 10 minutes ago, I have not shot with this yet. I would like to. But in, my, in your hand, it, it, feels, it does feel kind of top heavy. So it sure does. Uh, I think if you had the ever ready case around it, which I don't have oh. the case, maybe it would, it would feel better. But it, I, do, I do feel like it's constantly like falling forward. So. How long ago did you pick this up? I, it, this was one of the more recent things I got because I never even had a chance to use it. So probably two or three years ago. I have a, at the studio, I have one whole big desk that's just cameras that are like in line to be tested, fixed. And tried out. So now, this, this is in my to, to do pile. You mentioned the advanced lever is broken, and I will make a 3D. So just curious, because I'm not a 3D printer, like where would you come up with a schematic to feed the information into the 3D printer to make such a knob? Well, this is it's really simple. It's literally like a little flat disc with a with a threaded hole in the bottom. So this is a guitar knob. I actually, or this is an amp knob. I actually filled it full of epoxy, and when it hardened, I just drilled a little pilot hole, and then I. Because it's plastic, I screwed it onto the metal threads, and it mm. works perfectly. Um, it just smart. doesn't look quite right. I'm guessing that the uh, world of 3D printing is an immersive hobby, whereas there are like forums online that have trade schematics and yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's there's big libraries of files that you can get online. Like I can get online and, and specifically search for I need a knob, and I'll find a knob, and then I, you could scale it up or down to be the exact okay. size that you need. And to so to sum this all up. You're excited about shooting with this camera, but you have nothing to report yet because you have not roll, run a roll of film through it. I don't, yeah. And I mean, as far as it like, personally goes, as far as personal like, experience with these goes, a, a, a really compact 120 6x6 six six with a good range of shutter speeds, good range of apertures, mm. um, and, the, and the coupled rangefinder. I wanted one of these six or seven years ago, and I looked. They're kind of hard to find, but what I got was the Siegel 203, which I reviewed way back then, and I love the Siegel 203. Yeah, I remember. Which is a slightly newer. So this, this one is 55. I think the Siegel 203 is like early 60s, maybe 63, 64. But the Siegel 203 is half the weight. Uh, the Siegel 203 also sells on eBay for 20 or $30. This sells for, let's see, one just sold two weeks ago, shipped from Japan with the, with the leather case for $290. Shit. So this is the, the I, and I can't even give yeah. you a, a, a firm price on these because there's a bunch of them that are sold on eBay, but every single one that's sold has been a buy it now. But they're all between two hundred and thirty and three hundred dollars, oh. and they've all sold it buy it now. So wow. who knows what the actual value is? So people are paying hundreds of dollars for this camera. Wow. So I am curious to see. I've seen test images from it; they look great. I don't know if it's fifteen times better than my seal, but mm. well, we'll have to. Well, well but I'll try it's it out. Fifteen times more convenient to shoot with, though. Well, but the, the Seagull has all the same features. It's just oh, smaller it really? and lighter. Yeah. Oh. So we'll see. And but that one, but this one's more expensive. That's yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's way more. So I mean, weird. it must be much rarer. Must and be. it's it's sort of interesting. You know, if you're a Fuji guy, this is Fuji's first camera. Yeah. And it's the best of Fuji's first cameras. There was one. I should say there was one model above this one that came out the final year. Um, called the, uh, the what was it called the M? Super Duper Fuji the Super Duper yeah the Super <laughs> 6M it was called which is basically the same camera as this but it has the MXV lens on it so it's got a self timer and it's um, it's mm. synced for electronic flash okay uh, original retail was 24,500 yen which if you do the inflation adjustment and the currency conversion works out to about $1300 US. So Holy so this was a $1300 camera when it was new. It's Back in not the a cheap day? camera. Yeah. What? Wow. 
So it's not, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a throwaway camera. No wonder there's not a lot of them. Yeah, I guess. Well, when we come back, we're going to be reading some letters. Here on BBC One, after the striking of Big Ben, we welcome the New Year in by going to Scotland for a lively celebration. And those taking part include Jim Watt, the McCalmans, Jim Johnston's Scottish Country Dance Band, and many others besides. Before that, we prepare to say cheerio to this decade by joining Penelope Keith for The 70s Stop Here. A disc camera makes a great gift. But make sure it has an automatic flash, automatic exposure, ideally a five-year power pack, automatic wind-on, most important, a glass lens, and the button that does it all for you. This Kodak disc camera will give you all six for around £30. There are cheaper cameras, but then something has to go. The Kodak disc camera, the complete Christmas gift. Okay. Hey, we're back. Hey, this is from our uh, listener, Joe Collins. Who, Phil's brother. Who grew up in Manalapan. Do, 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 do. Manalapan. Do, What's do, Manalapan? Do, do. Manalapan. Do, 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 do. Suck you in. Do, 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 was very thought provoking for me. Oh, oh, that's nice. Oh. To hear. How did that's we poke nice his brain? How did that's we poke nice his brain? Well, whilst I will not bore you with all of it, I did want to share a bit. <laughs> well, I won't bore you with what you talked to me about. I've had a camera in my hand constantly since I bought my K1000 in 1988. Oh, he said, I think I bought it from a store in East Brunswick or around there. I grew up in. Manala pan. Manala pan. Somehow, I have managed to hold onto a lot of photos that I shot. What occurred to me after listening to 279 was this. I've lost a lot of photos to hard drive crashes. But none of my negatives ever crashed. Yeah, of course not. To bring it all home, I found strips of photos I took of my daughter 28 years ago at age two. Yikes. See attached. Jeez. I scanned it and looked like I took them yesterday. It's mm. ultimate embody of, embodiment. Embodiment. Thank you. Of why I love film. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you for helping me continue to learn film after all these years and for keeping the love of film alive. Stay safe, and I hope you all have happy holidays. There you go. That's a good story. It is a good story. And the great thing is, Mark, is that letters are not three years old anymore. This is from December 5th, 2021. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's uh, only a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think. Thank, thanks to COVID, I had to just do math in my head to make sure that wasn't very long ago because <laughs> I, I still think it's 2020 in my head. This made me think of an Instagram, fo- uh, Instagram follower who sent me a note saying, Hey, what's wrong with my picture? I'm new to film photography. And. I asked him some questions. I'm like, oh, okay, so what does the lab say? And he's like, well, I, I brought it to Walgreens. And I was like, oh, okay, so. Mm, strike one. Did you, okay. Recently? So, yeah, this is brand new. So the, the image. Where's was, Walgreens developing? Oh, no, they sent it out. Oh, I didn't realize they even did it at all anymore. I he mean, said, well, it was one of the walls. Yeah. Oh. Could well, have been Walmart. Walmart. So oh, the picture maybe. was a picture of a woman, but you know how like the. The separation was wrong. So you'd see it, and then you'd see the same picture, the red version. Oh, wow. It was, it was, so it was off. It was off like, from a computer. So I said to him, I was like, okay, so let's look at the negatives. He's like, I don't have the negatives. Oh, and, and this, this And this is the epidemic that's oh, occurring send them. across this country. Across this great country of ours. That's right. And that epidemic, and new shooters don't know that when you bring your film to Walmart... They send it out, and they just send you scans or prints back. They don't return your negatives. That's terrible. That's scary. That's it's, it's awful. There's no reason to shoot film then. <laughs> I guess not. You know, I mean, that's the joy of film photography is holding on to your negatives so that 30 years later, yeah. when you <clears> lose <throat> your prints or your scans blow up, you could be like, oh, here's my daughter at age two, and I could rescan these, and wow, they look as good as they or did. Or if there's a problem with the print. Uh, yes. Wow. So, you know, 
I'm, I'm, you know, preaching to the choir. I'm, I'm sure folks listening to this show, or if you're new to film photography, please be aware if you're bringing your, your film in to be processed and you don't get your negatives back. What show? That's strike three. You're out! Yeah, I completely forget about that. Go to a trusted film lab like thedarkroom.com, Dwayne's mm-hmm. Photo, you know, any of, like... A blue re- moon. Blue, blue moon. <laughs> Old school film lab. Yep. Uh, or do it yourself. Or do it yourself. Boutique At home or in a, uh, you know, a local darkroom. Yes. Search out a local darkroom. Yeah, DYI, baby. That's right. Here uh, in this area, uh, well, and if you're in New York, is the... Uh, the Brooklyn place? Yeah, the Brooklyn joint. I don't know what the name of it is, sorry. Uh, they call the Bushwick. Yeah. Oh, Bush- oh, that's it. The Bushwick, Bushwick Dark Community Darkroom. Dark yeah. Right. Matt and I went there. You did, with he the did. big camera. The that- big camera was there, right? Yes. Yeah. That big camera's back in action. Where is it now? It's in Ohio. Mm. Uh, and that is uh, Stephen Stephen Takas. You see, folks, my brain's still working. Sort of. What's, what's the big camera? Uh, it's the big. It's like the size it's like the of the walk-in camera. It's a walk-in camera. Oh, oh. It's a camera obscura. Oh, okay. So it's a big brownie, and Stephen Takas and Matt Mirage. Go for a big brownie. They're dabbling <laughs> in that R four color chemistry. Yeah. As is Ethan Moses. Ethan Moses, Mark Camerdactyl, s- sat right next to you at this very table. I remember. Yeah, they've been meddling with meddling, meddling, meddling with, in affairs, meddling with forces that are. <laughs> they've been playing with fire. Is what they're doing. I hate to say this, but if this was like I don't know the 1300s, you folks would be <laughs> arrested. You folks would be taken away for witchcraft. It's witchcraft. They'd be at the, like they'd be at the town hall. They'd be yeah. like, the colors are not natural. <laughs> it's true. Burn them. Burn them. <laughs> Sorry, man. Burn them. Sorry, man. Burn them. Sorry, man. Here's a letter from uh, this gentleman. Is an FPP customer. He lives in one of the great Scandinavian countries. Ah. And he's the only FPP customer I know of that has a his own Netflix stand-up comedy show. Oh, is that right? His name is uh, not, look. I'm gonna I'm gonna murder the name. That has not improved in the year 2022. No, you still can't read. Ari Eldjern. In a way, Icelanders are a bit like Finnish people, uh, except Finnish people take it way further. They express emotions completely differently, uh, in as much as they don't. I have a Finnish friend, he's a comedian. He he came to do a show with me two years ago. His flight was delayed by six hours, so it meant that he would now be landing the second our show was supposed to be starting. And I would have to do the first half, not knowing if he would come to do the second half. So I was in a panic calling him, and finally I got through like, hey, hey, are you in the country? Are you okay? Are you gonna make it? And he was like, hey, I am in a taxi cab. I paid the driver 100 euro, and he is driving 190 kilometer speed. He has driven over three roundabouts and almost hit two pedestrians and I think one sheep. And it is nerve wrecking. Eljorn. J A with the thing over the A. R N. The Eljorn. Um, umlop, right? Umflop? What do you call that? El maybe it's maybe it's <laughs> elephant. El Eljorn. Eljorn. You didn't say enough letters. Oh. Umlap, right? Eljorn. Eldarn. I don't know. So dial up your Netflix. And uh, look up Ari Eljan, A E L D J A R N. So Ari, do you do any camera jokes? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ari bought a lot of uh, do-it-yourself chemistry from our FPP online store. Oh, cool! And if you are outside the U.S., essentially this store, sh- we say, look, we ship to the U.S. and Canada. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's it. But we will ship anywhere else in the world if you agree mm-hmm. to a. You know, we send a, 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 what would you say? A release. A release. He pays your money, he takes your chances. Yeah, yes, that's exactly right. Because the problem is with COVID and, you know, everything being so mucked up, we could send, and we, this is, I mean, things happen for reasons, folks. So yeah. we had a customer in France who ordered a bunch of movie film, and that's expensive stuff, and we shipped it, and he never got it, and he kept saying, like, I'm like, you know, da, da, da. I'm like listen, <laughs> give it more time. Please give it more time. Gave more time. Six months go by. Holy sheesh. Give it more time. But more people, than six months? Yes. Holy shit. <laughs> so he made a ruckus. It's customer, not, not Ari. 
And you know, there was not surprising. If I didn't get my thing in six months, there are online place. fisticuffs. Yeah. yeah, and I think there was a refund involved. But did you let him know ahead of time? Hey, this yes. may take up to three lifetimes yes. to reach you. The 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 key for twenty twenty two and beyond is patience. So, Pazienza. wouldn't you know? A week after we went through this fisticuffs, ah, oh, jeez, it, it arrived. arrived. And to this customer's credit, he emailed us and said, "Stuff arrived. I will now pay you." Oh, that's very good. Yeah, we. I mean, top. You folks out there, you, you're the best, absolute best. So well, you can't blame him for losing his. So now we send there. out a disclaimer saying, "Look, this could literally oh. take eight months to arrive at your door. It Yikes. just it's it, out of your hands. It's out of our hands. It's once like, it leaves the the shop here, there's nothing you can plus, do. To you know, in different parts it. of the world, there are, you know, COVID shutdowns again where. You know, the country will mm-hmm. quote unquote shut down again. Uh, and that means that that postal service in whatever country that might be may take four it's not months. Even off. that, it's the shipping containers if you're shipping across the country. If you have, if you have a country with a really terrible Port. postal service like the United States. Yeah, love joy. <laughs> did, you, did you ever get to, speaking of waiting three lifetimes, did you ever get your jolly luck? Nope. <laughs> That's been like four years. Still waiting. Man, sure, maybe just, yeah, someone else got it. The last wave is supposed to go out, and I guess I'm on the last wave. So they're uh, antiques at this point. Keep original box, man. It's gonna be worth some money. <laughs> All right. So Ari says. So he got the the disclaimer, right. and he says, "Ha ha, dear Justin, Justin's at the FTP shipping now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, please tell Mr. Michael Rosso that this is indeed a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? He says I can hear his voice saying it." And that I agree to roll the dice should it be lost in transit and not hold the FPP accountable. Or if you think FedEx, then he goes into, is FedEx a better option? Mm-hmm. Like sort of. Is it? Um, no, not necessarily. No. No. Furthermore, tell Mr. Rasso that your lovely podcast and videos turned an Icelandic comedian absolutely insane for film during lockdown. Yes. We were just talking about See? that. See, he was one of the guys who went the, the other way. Yeah. He and, got all my mojo. <laughs> and, and I am now descending fast into an utter celluloid madness <laughs> and am seriously considering shooting my next stand-up special on two <gasps> and I was just going to say that. Get out. Yep. That's a great idea. So his comedy special from last year, the www.netflix.com What's it called? What's forward it called? slash US forward slash title forward slash 8133708. the title. <laughs> What's like, the name of the damn show? You, you're you the one with the smartphone. Uh, Type it in. Ari Elgern. How do you spell Elgern? E-L-D. Hold on. Time to wake this show up. A-R-I-E-L-D. D. J. J. A with thing. A with elephant. A with elephant. R-N. I don't know how to put the elephant on there. <laughs> if you hold down your A, it'll pop up. Here he is. His parents. <laughs> read his parents' name, please. What? See where it says parents? Oh, man. That, <laughs> that, those none are of those letters names. are even in our, in our. I don't even know. But what's that. the name of the special? Porarin Eljarn. It just says parents. Gunnar Olaf Dodder Eljarn. Pardon my Icelandic. Oh, he's oh. Icelandic? Okay. Oh, I know oh, wait, that. No, country. that's. Um, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what it's called. Watch Ari L. Jarn's Pardon My Icelandic next Netflix. I love Iceland. Where's Johnny Link? Right here, right here. Happy New Year's, John. I love Iceland. That's where we should have our next FPP. Totally. It's so easy to get to. Oh, my God. It's like a four-hour flight. We have to go. Really? What are you talking about? How is that? From JFK to Iceland. Oh, my God. Oh, you're saying you're not going across. You're going up. It's not that. Yeah, it's only halfway. It's like halfway to England. It's not that Um, far. It's so easy to get We to. have to go during the Northern Lights, though. I was there during the summer solstice. It was amazing. We went out at like uh, 1 in the morning for oh like God. a puffin tour at Reykjavik, in Reykjavik. What's it's awesome. You've puffin been there? The bird? Yeah. There was like millions of them. What are you really? doing there? Oh. Sightseeing. We How went long out, ago? We went to Gullfoss. We went to the Blue How Lagoon. Long ago? How long ago? Te- How long ago? Oh, How two, long it was ago? 2009. It was right when they had their big economic crash. Oh. Okay. So we, we went out when it was cheap. We, you were out there to help them out. Yeah. Did you stay in an ice hotel? <laughs> no, I stayed in a in a in a concrete hotel. Concrete. That's no. Fun. They have ice hotels. Yeah, but we were there in June. Oh well, so they don't not have not ice hotels ice. in June. But it was it was amazing. It's one of my top three favorite places. Well, I've so ever it been. was like it was like sunny all day and night long. It, it got like dusky from like two a.m. to four a.m. Oh, like, like 
It Sounds got, like a nightmare. Well, we had like blackout curtains in the hotel, but it was great. So during we, we went into a pub and we hung out all night. There was like oh, an Irish yeah. band playing, and we come out. It's one o'clock in the morning, but it's still light out. Oh my god! It felt like so seven weird. p.m. It was you, so you weird. You probably felt invincible. I like, loved it. Let's go! What's I'm sleeping, next? Sleeping three hours a day. Oh my god! You gonna check out the special? Yeah, I'm going to for sure. I put it on my list. Okay, terrific. So next time we'll we'll be back with a review. Next next episode. <laughs> Better be mm. funny. So we had an episode we talked about no shortcuts, the whole shortcuts thing. So this is from Kevin Duckett. What do you mean no shortcuts? Listen. Oh. I was just listening to the latest episode of the FPP when you guys were talking about people buying likes and views. Yeah, those guys. And, and how there are no shortcuts in life. It reminded me of this insightful clip of the late comedian Gary Shandling, mm. who I'm a big fan of. Yeah. And let's listen. I was in a clothing store, and I'm walking around primarily looking for a shirt, just so you can understand my intention in this story. And a young man comes up to me, and he says, "Uh, Mr. Shanley, can I talk to you a second? I said, "Uh, sure, what's up? He said, you know, I've only been in L.A. like a few months, and I want to do stand-up comedy. I said, right. He said, well, there's got to be a secret, right? There's got to be a shortcut. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, I know I hear about guys having to go to work in clubs and they'd have to do this and they do this and it's all about the work and you got to go and try jokes and write jokes. and this, that. But there's always a shortcut. I said, no, there's no shortcut. There's literally no shortcut. Yeah. Stoops. You know, you, you really can't fast track anything. No, you can't. You got to put in your time, dude. Mm-hmm. And I'm, we have Mr. Mark Dalzell here. We talk. We talk about you a lot on the show. Thanks. You know, uh, we say that, uh, oh, hey, you know, Guy always has nice coats. <laughs> <laughs> we say, like, when you first got into film photography, you had a lot of mishaps, right, with the chemistry and all? Yeah. yeah. You know, or if the camera's not working or, yeah, not, you know, not understanding curve. anything. Yeah, for sure. You just keep plowing I still it. do. Yes. So I think the thing is, of all the great, you know, we were complimenting on your photography, of all the great shots I see, think of all the times and you know, the camera, you, you pack, you know, camera doesn't work. All the disappointments. Yeah, all the disappointments. The road to success is paved with failure. So, Absolutely. You know, you get that one amazing shot. There's like 10 others that you thought for sure were going to be amazing. And then you get them, you know, developed. And you're like, uh, what did I do wrong? So yeah, there's no fast tracking. Yeah. You know, that's why I have, speaking of comedians, you have to have a lot of respect for comedians. Oh my goodness. Because they go up there how many times a week and... And have so even the most successful comedian has been has bombed or been mm-hmm. booed or been ridiculed, but even the ones that are successful today, you have to go through that. That's your trial, you know. That's how you earn your wings with all those failures. You have to go through that process in order to be somebody of you know of note. Earlier in the show, we mentioned price reductions on brownie movie cameras. That covers the brownie turret cameras too. And now here's Ozzy to show you how they work. Well, here's the brownie turret I use, and I can get three different kinds of movie shots with it. One lens gives you big telephoto close-ups. This is for your medium shots. And when you want a beautiful wide-angle shot, use this lens. Now watch. This is my wide-angle shot. Kids are pretty good, aren't they? Now I turn the turret, and here's my medium shot. Another turn, and here's my close-up. And I didn't have to move a step. See, what could be easier? Thank you, Ozzy. Now, about those prices. Now you can get a brand new Brownie Turret movie camera for just $59.50 or as little as $6 down. That's right, for just $6 down, you can make home movies with a real professional touch. So, see your Kodak dealer this week. Hey, we're <laughs> back, and John is going to, you know... I'm just going to read a bunch of names of people who have, who have donated... Nobody writes this is like the stories. You know, like a little story. Oh, it's like the ticker along the bottom of the screen. You have a whole box from from our, last time. No, we didn't. We didn't <gasps> talk about that. Ron Hoffer. Ron Hoffer. Ron's package. So remember, a while back, there's this book right there. What's it called? Where? On the from the Bronx oh. to Berlin and beyond. We we did a, a review, and he sent in a nice uh, camera. Yep. What, what, what was the camera again? Oh, it was, it's right over here. It's the uh, the yeah. Bell and Howell. Bell and Howell. That's what it was. Beautiful Bell and Howell with the um, the lenses that switched. Oh, my Remember? God. It was a Bell and Howell Canon camera that... I can't wait to hear the end of the story. This no, is intense. No, the lens, you, can't, you don't switch lenses. It comes with a 50 millimeter, but if you want 35 millimeter wide angle, you put an attachment on top of it. So Ron sent us another package. 
And he sent us a print uh, of a camera. This is a print he shot with the camera he donated, which was a... Well, let me read a little bit. Enclosed are the remnants of my attempt to fall in love with a somewhat fancy 620 film camera, a Kodak Tourist 2. Nice. Which I hereby gift to you guys. Alas, the story of love gone slightly awry. I picked it up for lunch money in the dustbin of a shop in Virginia Hinterland and MacGyvered the tape and construction paper set up you see to deal with the pinhole bellows. Bellows! Bellows! So impressed with the solid framework, so happy to test drive with your re-rolled 620 film, or 400 rather, from the FPP store. Prefaced with my sweating to get the darn film in the beast, yet surprising it yielded some Crisp. decent negatives. That's the picture Crisp. he took with it. Crisp! So he's giving it to us and a bunch of other films. And, you know, great guy. I'm going to put this on the wall. Promoting his books again. Uh, his book again. It's from Bronx to Berlin and beyond. And you can get it, uh, you know, where you find books to read. This is and a thanks very again, Ron. And, all fine oh, retailers. Look, and here's, here's some film. Uh, he, inclu- he also included the 620 to 35 millimeter adapter. Look at that. This is a Kodak Tourist 2. Mm-hmm. I can camera. make those now. S- 620 camera. Here. Let's see if you let's see what the Dalzell thinks of it. These are nice cameras, the tourists too. They take a really wide. Speaking of folding it. cameras. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, eight shots per. Yeah. Why do you suppose he didn't collapse it? Is it because he MacGyvered it? Because he had to. Yeah, because he, he had to wrap the bellows. So I guess it's not folding anymore. No, see, yeah, yeah, see, he wrapped it. Oh, look at that. Folks out there, we have a Kodak tourist camera. Fixed wing. 620. Doesn't fold anymore. If you have any interest in this camera and shooting with it, it comes with a roll of film, the camera, as well as a 35 millimeter 620 adapter kit. Mm-hmm. So you just need to be, you can't be, you, not, to, you can't be in Iceland. You have to answer this question. <laughs> you have to be willing to wait six months to no, get it. No, you have to answer this question. Which version coat is Mark currently wearing? Oh, we don't oh. even know. I said. He Which said version? it. He said, I don't. Give the answer away. Are you sure you said it? You're going to have to go back and listen to that. That's right. Now. Oh, my God. You're going to have to Mike's listen closely to, to the episode. To the and you can attest to the sharpness. That picture is gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. That's not the camera I expected to see that had taken that picture. No. I, I own two Kodak Tourist cameras, and I love them because eight shots per roll, so it takes a big negative. Big negative. Big. And the lenses are very good. So this camera is it has a handicap. You know, and the fact that it doesn't fold anymore. But, you know, really could use a good home. Who does? Thank you, Ron. Filmphotographyproject.com. All right, really quick before we go, because we do have to go. Yes. Some thank yous from some people. Just some real quick. Just some names of people. You don't have any stories? No, a lot Make of people up a don't story. write stories. That's what I said to him. Just run, roll the music. Okay. We'd like to thank Jeffrey Powers from New Boston, uh, Michigan. I want to thank Tara Werner. Tara, we want to thank Elizabeth Epstein. Look at that story. Shane Seaton, in honor of Norris and Stan Seaton, he said, These cameras belong to my grandfather and father. I began shooting on the AE1 in college around 2000. That AE1, by the way, uh, just so you know, Shane was sent out to a camera donation program for Brooklyn this summer. I hope they still work and will provide joy to others. It already has. Thank you, Shane. Uh, and then I have Suzanne Stanton on behalf of Franklin and Peggy Stanton. Uh, her elderly parents, Franklin and Peggy, are in the process of downsizing. They would like to donate their enclosed cameras. They had an Olympus Infinity Zoom 200, some film, and a camera case. Thank you so much. From Linda Hart and Kevin Hart. Not that Kevin Hart. That would be awesome. From Schenectady. Is that how you say it? Schenectady. Schenectady. Damn it. I practiced that, too. <laughs> Schenectady, New York. Thank you so much for your donation. Loretta Bennett, Wallington, Connecticut. Thank you so much. Pete. That's all it says. Best. Pete. Pete. Best. If you're listening, you know who you are. <laughs> Best. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we also have a donation from Gary L. Frost from West Henrietta, New York. Uh, Nikon Gear. Uh, he said he bought the camera itself in 72 overseas when he was in the Navy. In the Though Navy. I got some great years and uses, <laughs> usage out of it, it's pretty much been in storage since. But I can tell you, Nikon, <clears throat> Nikons are in high demand, and it'll go to good use, Gary. Thank you so much for your donation. Gail Moscone, uh, donating a camera, good condition, battery covered, blah, blah, blah. Gail, thank you so much for your donation. Ray 
Valenzuela. Uh, he donated a camera that he shot uh, in the wild while he was uh, hiking with the Sierra Club. So thank you so much for your donation. Also, Susan just says Susan. Glad to see you can use these, Susan. If you know who you are, thank you. So the Goodwill of Northern England sent us a bunch of stuff. Mostly lenses. Yeah, a lot of lenses. I mean, every once in a while we'll get an order in from them. Uh, Uh, I think that is our regular Oh, wait, it says Goodwill of Northern New England. Stupid. Oh. (laughs) From Gorham, Maine. The fanciest part Uh, of England. New England. Christian McLaughlin. I think is the person responsible. So thank you very much for your donation. It'll go to good use. We have Joan Wallet from Shaker Heights, Ohio. I'm not stopping this because I know John is getting a lot of satisfaction because I, it's not. I'm getting it off the table. I have so much. Every time I open a box and I put it in there, the box is getting full and full. Okay, fuller. folks, just bear with us. Get All right, listening. Carolyn Barry. Thank you so much for your donation. There's going to be some really good music at the end. Just hang in there. Keep the podcast and, uh, going. Keep the show going, okay? Who, who, who's on the, on the bowl, John? My mother, my mother. Keep talking. Keep the show going. We'll keep Don't it. end the show, though. I wanted to keep keep going on. After. It says nine minutes remaining, but um, I want to keep the show going. And my favorite from Cappy. Don't end it. Cappy, I don't know who you are or where you're from, but thank you so much for your donation. Uh, Ronnie Klein also sent uh, some cameras along. Thank you, Ronnie. Richard Turpin from Alexandria, Virginia. Thanks so much for your donation. This is from John Talbert. Uh, He donated some Nikon cameras and lenses. Thank you so much for your donation. And that's all for now. Okay. Next next time we'll read a couple more. Thank you, John. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you, people. Uh, Mark, I think you should come down more often. Yeah, definitely. All nice right. having you here. Let me know. Yeah. I'm always around. And I'm sure you can grab one of your other cameras that you haven't shot with yet. I got, like I said, I got 30 on the to-do list, so I'll pick another one. I got, I do, I, I, I brought it with me today, but we, uh, I don't, I didn't, haven't researched it yet, but I've got, this is lined up for next time. The Agfa Ambi Silet. Ambi? Oh, my God. Look that, at that. That it's Ambi, interesting. Up, it's got flip-up uh, sunglasses. Oh, right. The, the visors that they used to get in the Holy 70s. Holy smokes. So that's the next the one. The little clip-on sunglasses, right? I was going to talk about it, but I forgot. This actually has removable lenses, and I forgot to bring the other lenses. Oh. So <laughs> I'll, I'll dig out the lenses. So uh, do you think you'll be, sh- you'll be shooting black and white in the Super Fijica? I'm more inclined to develop color film than black and white you know, film. I have so I'll shoot for color. you. Do you still own uh, like you know powder? It's still in powder form. The C forty one kits, or you're out? Uh, no, I'm out of that. You're out. Do I have something for you? Ooh. Is it a powder C forty one kit? It's our all new super FPP C forty one kit. Wow. What's a super? I'm telling you, I don't. I, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know. These are made specially for the FPP, and the colors are just gonna pop, pop, pop. All right. All right. It's a whole. It's a whole thing. Is it the shit? It's the shit. There's no, there's no blicks. There's developer, developer, two developers. Develop. <laughs> there's developer. Got it. Three developers. Go. <laughs> there's fixer. There's no blicks. All right. So, developer and fixer. Developer fixer. It's it's delix instead of blicks. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't I don't have a pad. I don't have it like You're not a chemist or a very smart person. Right? You just look it up really fast. There. They they just make it for you. Right. You don't even know how in, it works. Just type in FPP. Wait, how do you spell that? FPP. <laughs> how do you spell F? <laughs> Super Super Color Kit. Color There's a little guy who runs over to your house and develops your film for you. It's your own little child. He's super. Uh it's $30. Says contains developer bleach and fixer. Okay, no so, blix is a f- well bleach and fix is blix. That's what but, blix but this is. is th- you have developer, developer, the bleach, and a fixer. Well, that's yeah. an extra step. <laughs> <laughs> it used to just be developer and blix. Okay, so what? But you're getting more color. <laughs> more. You're getting more color. You're getting fifteen uh, percent more color for your money. <laughs> you are. All right, I'll check it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> Leslie has used it and loved it. Uh, but I don't have too many people that have, like, you know, other than customers who keep buying it. Oh, well, it's a good seller. And I'm battling, battling to lower prices. Battling to lower prices. I'll battling give, to lower prices. Give me lower I'll give you price. less money. That's fine. Things aren't what they used to be. It used to be... Ain't you, nothing like it used like, to be. It was under, like, it was like 20 bucks. You, 20 bucks or less, these kits used to be. Yeah. Now everything's like, oh, my God. Oh, well, that's, I mean, we have, I mean, talk about... 
the industry changing and shipping problems and whatever, like the prices on all my stuff at my store have, have all gone up like 30% in the last yeah. four yep. months. That's the way. You hear that, folks? If I can even get it. It's, it's not crazy. Kodak. It's not Fujifilm. It's oh. everybody. It's everything. It's at the point now where I'm, I'm embarrassed when someone says, how much is that pack of strings? I'm like, I'm sorry. It's not my fault. But like it was $6 two years ago, and now it's $9. Like, I'm sorry. Speaking oh. of the pizza... Pizza. I walked into you know our fa- uh, Bella Vita, yeah. Bella Vita. Yeah, yeah. They have you know you walk in there two slices five bucks. I was like oh, like really wow. that's good. That's the good old days price. Yeah, two slices five bucks. I used to get two slices and a soda for a dollar twenty five for a nickel. Yeah, no. I just saw there was just a write up in one of the New York City papers a couple weeks ago about how the inflation and the supply chain problems are doing away, they will finally do away with the, with the New York City $1 slice. So yeah. you won't be able to get a $1 uh, slice anymore. It's true. Dollar fifty. Yeah, it'll be like a dollar fifty. So how are those so. big cans of Arizona tea still 99 cents? How do they do that? <gasps> They're not. They are. They're 125 Maybe they will. I mean, the, the deli that I go to, I just bought two the other day, and they were a buck each. I don't understand. It's cheaper than water. How do they do that? Mm. When we come back, John will be doing a review of the two Genesis concerts he saw. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. Three. Fake Genesis. Oh, the, the musical box. Anybody is a fan of old school I, Genesis, pre Phil Collins, but actually their first two albums with Phil Collins, Wind and Wuthering and Trick of the Tail, must see the musical box, Canadian tribute band. Folks listening, you want to meet, meet up with us in the city, yeah. Steve Hackett in yeah. April, right? Yeah. Steve Hackett, of course, was, was at Beacon? At the Beacon. Yeah, guitarist for Genesis, and he, he is the only artist besides Don McLean that I will go see. Mm. Wow. Wait, quite an endorsement. Who? Steve? Buddy Hackett? Steve. <laughs> <laughs> He's still around? Buddy Hackett and Don McLean. A duck walks into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I think Buddy Hackett passed. He did, unfortunately. I'm sure he did. Yeah. Ah, nice. Right. Well played. Yes. Wait, how did we get to Kevin Bacon from there, though? Well, we'll see you on the 15th. Okay. Happy New Year. And it's also the end of broadcasting for... Thursday, the end of broadcasting for 1970 and the beginning for 1971. The time now is five minutes past midnight on the 1st of January, 1971. This is Douglas Smith wishing you all good night. We'll be with you again in the morning. Good night, everyone. At the third stroke, it will be 11. 59 and 50 seconds. At the third stroke, it will be 12 o'clock precisely. At the third stroke, it will be 12 o'clock and 10 seconds.
if the lines or equipment are engaged, you may hear our own engaged tone or one of the American engaged tones. The tone indicating that the local lines or equipment in America are engaged will sound like this. If the number you have dialed is engaged, the American tone will sound like this. Line 3 London are engaged. Please dial later.